Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Linda Detective Mysteria Holmes's route. Let's go. How clumsy of me. It seems I've dropped your homemade clotted cream. This isn't like you at all. Still, if Elissa forgives you, then why shouldn't I? Angie? Everything you make tastes so wonderful. I don't think there's anything in this world you can make that I wouldn't eat. At first, Elissa was nothing more than awestruck. But soon her head was downward, expression masked by her fringe, with her shoulders beginning to shake. Elissa? Elissa, what's wrong? Not to worry. She'll be all right after I take her outside for some fresh air. Dot, dot, dot. The two of us lead Elissa to the dorm entrance, leaving Angelica alone in her room. I don't believe you ever gave this cream to the students in the choir. Ugh. Rafis was your motivation, yes? We heard from him that the two of you used to be in a relationship. Because I was the one who was seeing him first. I never thought a friend of mine would take him away from me. I loved him. I couldn't understand why he chose Angie over me. Oh, I didn't even press anything into this. What the heck? <laughs> okay. I can't stand how much regret I feel for introducing him to her. I never told Angie that I was seeing him, so perhaps I'm at fault. But, but I didn't imagine he would come to fancy her. For what felt like the first time, Elissa looked directly at us, eyes glossed over from tears that had yet to fall. I could take him back if Angie were absent. That's what I told myself. I didn't think on it too hard in the beginning. I imagined how much easier it would be to get him alone once she was bedridden. And that didn't go as planned. She's all he ever talks about. Every single day, she's been away. It's Angie, Angie, Angie. This just... They just grew closer and closer. Still, that isn't enough. I knew I was wrong, but... I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't. Elissa collapsed and broke into heavy sobs. Angie is a sweet girl. She's innocent and bright, even to me. Had you spoke of the nature of your relationship with him, things might have gone a different route. You should know that with the route you chose, Angie may have died. N no one in this world can stop two people from falling in love. By the time I considered talking to her, it was too late. How pitiful would I have looked when they were already in love? I know I did something unforgivable. But please, please, please don't tell anyone about what I did. If Angie and Rafus knew about this, they would hate me. But what you did was clearly attempted murder. Do you realize that? I didn't mean to. I didn't think that far ahead. I... Please. I'm begging you to keep it a secret. Elissa, you've got issues. Why would you... I don't get it. Anyway. <laughs> All she could do was cry, cry some more, and beg. I have to say, it's like if you do that to someone, why, why would they want to... You still want them to be your friend, even though you're practically trying to kill them? That's, I don't know, that's just kind of weird. Anyway, if my mother were to find out, she would grow ill with grief, and my father would whip my back till I could no longer stand. I would be arrested and imprisoned. You deserve it. That's payment for what you did. Is that so difficult to understand? Please, please, please. I don't want to be arrested. Have mercy, father, mother. <laughs> It was neither Marple nor I who broke the silence. Sarah? Emily? Could you please forgive her? Of all the people in the world who would first speak of forgiveness, it was Angelica, who was still in her nightgown. What? Angelica? How long have you been there? And you shouldn't be up. I'm sorry, Sarah, but... I was so worried about Elissa. I heard everything. Uh, Angie? Angelica had dragged her weakened body down despite it working against her for every step. 
She stumbled as she approached Elissa, who lost the will to speak at the sight of her. Elissa is my... She's one of my dearest friends. Everyone has another side of them, a good side and a bad side, and I'm still alive. Why, even a healthy person come down with sickness at times. That's true, isn't it, Sarah? <laughs> Marple looked down at the floor, lost for words. In the short time I'd known her, I'd never seen her look so, as unsure of what to do as she did now. The silence was almost too heavy for us to bear. Go. Me? Get out. Leave the dorm by the end of the day, and promise me that you will go somewhere far, far away from Angie and never come back. If you break that promise, I'll have Scotland Yard find you, and I'll tell Rafus what you did. Marple? Uh, um... I'm not an informant of any kind for the police, but you'd best leave before I consider, consider being one. Jeez, I'm derping real bad right now. I understand. Please take care of Angie. I will. Elissa, take care. Do keep yourself in good spirits, all right? Yes, same to you. Thank you, Angie. And I'm truly, truly sorry. In the end, she couldn't choke back her tears as she said her goodbyes. Several days passed in a rush. At any rate, I'm so glad Angelica's all right now. I'm glad too. Seems she's even well enough to attend choir practice already. And yet, part of me can't help but feel like I stole her best friend. Marple. She said it in her ordinary matter-of-fact tone, but I could hear the sadness beneath. Excuse me, would you pretend you didn't hear that? As we walked through the halls, we could overhear enthusiastic chatter from the music room. Captain, uh, let's try our parts again one more time. All right. Shall we begin with the sopranos, then? I forgot what I did with his voice. It is essential that we have everyone's cooperation in time for the Christmas concert. We can do this now. We'll have to put everything we have into this since Elissa quit the choir. Let's put our backs into it. They all seemed full of life, as if they were having a great fun. Oh, I've been meaning to speak with you again. Angelica had a spring in her step as soon as she ran towards us in the hall. The two of you will be attending our Christmas concert, won't you? Of course. I wouldn't miss it for the world. And Sarah, I hope you haven't forgotten that promise we made. I'm sorry. Promise? You said you would cook some of your homemade vegetable soup. I've been waiting ever since, but I can only wait so long, you know? But of course, soon then. It appeared that a weight had lifted from Marple's shoulders as she watched Angie return to practice. Oh, how I envy her. She's living out her youth to its fullest and having all kinds of fun with club activities. Is it difficult for someone of the nobility to participate in club activities? Ugh, unfortunately. <laughs> Listen, Emily, there are more ways than one to live life to its fullest. For a start, since it's such a pretty day, what would you say to having a cup of tea whilst we listen to the choir? Her cheeks flushed as the corners of her mouth curled modestly. Did you bake scones by any chance? How did you know? I've got jam, cream, and tea. Well, how could I say no? I'll have one of everything, please. I was reminded of when I had visited Angelica once, alone, since I was worried about her after all that happened. Marple's name had come up in the conversation. Sarah says what comes to mind so directly that many find her to be callous, but she has a keen sense for how others feel and is equally true to herself. I'm a bit unrefined and insensitive, you know, but Sarah's always taken the time to look after me. I know you and Sarah will become fast friends. I've not seen her smile the way she was when the two of you had tea together in forever. 
she must be so happy to wearing such a beautiful smile. But could Marple really be so misunderstood? I hadn't intended to let that one slip. Hmm? Uh, what's this about misunderstanding me? <laughs> that would be a secret. Now, shall we lunch? Shall we lunch? That sounds so weird. Shall we lunch? Anyway, as I reached for a scone... Don't! I felt an iron grip upon my wrist. Eep! M Marple? Did she not wash her hands? Given recent events, my heart gave a bold thump. Emily, I urge you to wipe your hands with this napkin before eating. I knew it. I knew it. You're always so thorough, aren't you? I should think so. I learned from my grandmother to always mind my table manners. Keep your hands clean and be certain to finish everything on your plate. Like before, Marple handed me a petite napkin. Angie is more engrossed in her club activities than ever. I miss her. If you miss her, then how would you like to look after me in her place? I'd love to learn all that you've learned. And I should like to keep having tea together with you like this, if it's all right. Well, I'll give it some thought. Marple elegantly wiped her hands and reached for a scone. Oh, jeez, those birds are so freaking loud. <laughs> with the case now solved, it was nice to be able to return to daily life again. And through the experience, Marple and I had grown a little closer as well. Ooh, that is a pretty cool looking moon. I like that. I spoke with Pendleton that evening, as I always did. Thank you for dinner. It was very tasty. My lady was gotten into you. Pendleton possessed a dubious brow as he brought me milk tea. You declared with gumption that you could eat anything and survive, but here you are, behaving true in definition of elegance. Did you eat something rotten? I did not. I always behave like this. But I feel I've realized something that from what's happened recently, how murder can be motivated even by the most petty of emotions. I thought that I should make a stronger effort to appreciate the meals prepared for me. It's something one normally takes for granted. Well, well. It appears you've realized one, no, two things. More than two. Ever since I've been attending the academy, I've discovered something new each and every day. That warms my heart to hear. A good thing, too, as my heart was broken utterly upon sending you off. You? A broken heart? You're being dramatic. Far from it. I fear I may have understated my grief. Why, on your first day of school, I suffered agony equal to that of hacking away at one's midsection and scraping off all this viscera? Viscera? Viscera. That's what the word was. Um, Pendleton. That is... Oh, jeez. A weird example. Mm, I cannot imagine how painful that would be. So... Understated, it will remain. I daintily sipped my milk tea. I'm going to let you guys go here. I hope, jeez, how many dot, dot, dots. I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.